is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And uh, over there is uh, my lovely and adorable wife. It's Friday. It's Friday. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. It's Friday. Friday. Let's see. Is your, is your uh, camera, uh, maybe I should move it down a you little do bit. This no, every no, time. Don't, don't, no, you don't come in early enough for me to you set never, it up. Hold on a second. Let me just. Uh, let me bring it up just a little bit. There we go. There we go. A little more. Ah, there we go. Okay. Hi. Now, now, now we can do the split screen. And there we are. And, and here, here we are. Watch this, folks. Ba da. Da da. So anyway, uh, ah. it must be Friday. She's here. She's here. The, One. The, the fourth wife. <laughs> Wife number four in a series. Yeah, wife number four in a series. <laughs> yeah, I talked to wife number two today. Okay. Yeah, spent about uh, 45, 50 minutes on the phone with her. God, that's more than you talk to me. Talking about all manner of stuff. Well, you know what it is? I don't know. She can't figure it out either. She's got, uh, she had pancreatic cancer. I mean, she still has it technically. They, they never say you, you don't have it. Uh, but they had the big operation, and they they got a lot of it, and now she's having chemotherapy because they found some polyps in the uh, in her poly, her what Other you, areas. Uh, whatever yeah. her lymph nodes uh, had some cancer mm. in them. So she's having, and she feels great. I mean, she's peppy. She's got more energy than I do. On the phone, she doesn't stop talking. <laughs> she you know she says she cleaned the house twice today. I mean, for some reason. Uh, terminal disease becomes her. You know, I mean, really, I mean, it, it's amazing uh, uh, the, the energy that she has. And she says, I feel guilty because I feel, th and we'll, we'll call her again and she can talk about this, and she feels guilty about the fact that she doesn't feel terrible. You know, that she, she actually... Feels feel, okay. Yeah, feels okay. Well, and no, Nobody uh, the, says that if you have cancer, you have to feel bad and sick yeah and the chemo isn't exactly uh treating her bad so you know it's, it's all good uh, it's all good it's all good yeah so anyway uh see I, I have to do things like fix stuff here see i'm i'm the cook and the bottle washer here well so and your point is yeah well i'm i'm you know i'm thinking about either uh, mister yeah. mister what oh, there's a, a light boy I'll be glad when this thing goes bad. Da -da. When it goes bad. Can you see it? Yes, we can see. Of course, I do it. I light, I light it up every night. I usually light it up before we even go on. You know, you tell me all these stories about, about the things that you do for me that when I'm not here. When you're not here. Right. Yeah, I completely forget about them because I like being nagged. I'm a nagger. I had the most wonderful afternoon. Did I, re you really? I reconnected with an old friend that I haven't seen in quite a while, and it was just wonderful. It was just great. And she had kind of disappeared from from view. Yeah. 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 So I mean, every, it was just nice. We did a whole bottle of wine, and and had lunch, and it was it was nice. Very nice afternoon. Yeah. How? Uh, when did you leave work? At my usual, about three ten. Oh, about three ten. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to make sure you're working. I'm your pimp. Nine over nine hours. That's enough yeah. for one day. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know what I hate in this world? I guess when, as you get older, it's terrible. Is when they change the rules. You know, and you've been sending me money every month for like your part of the utilities. Don't ask why. We're married. We probably should have a single bank account, but you don't want that, right? Right. You want your own bank account. I want my independence. With, uh, you have your in, well, you have so your there. independence. That's for damn sure. So there. Yeah. So so she, she to take care of the utility, she sends me money yeah. through the bank yeah. transfer. Yeah. And and it just doesn't gets, cost anything, and it's done in a second. Gets deposited right into my account. But today it all changed. Well, no, it changed about a month or so ago. But, but the last time you deposited, it hadn't taken effect yet. It's been it's been for a while. Really? Yeah. 
Well, you didn't do it that way last month. Yes, I did. It's, oh. it's the only way they do it now. But I had my address right with, the, with my bank. Well, it might have been your old email address. Mm -mm. The bank has my uh, the, the new e email address that I use for business. Yeah, stuff. but last month it may have still been on the old email address. Uh, no. We were already had all this stuff in and there was no email coming here. Anyway. From the old address. Anyway, you got it and it's fine. It's yeah. all set up. I'm still having trouble with that old address. I keep getting things here that on the computer say we can't send it because hey Bennett at uh, Doesn't exist NYC.r.com won't respond and right. I'm going I don't need it to respond anymore. It's like the cable company puts this virus into your system. You well, know. And the other thing is you want to go into that account wherever it is and, and do the new one and they say well we'll send you an email to your oh, address. No, 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 that I like. That's good. But it's to an address that doesn't exist anymore. No, no, no. If you say you want a new address. Right. Okay. Uh, it then um, uh, sends a, an email to the new address. They sometimes send it no, to the they, they old won't send, address. No, they won't send it to the old address because they know the reason you're changing it is that you may have gotten rid of that old address. Now, what they might do is they might say to confirm who you are, please, we're, we're sending you a, a, code. a code. Put the code in. Then you put the code in. Then then they send you an email saying, this is your address, right? And then you go click and they go, okay, now you're, you're in, you know. But... Uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, it's problems. You know, it's just everything. They always keep changing the rules on you, and it's because they really don't know what to do for the sake of security. Well, especially now, I did what um, what Rob said, and I put a close on my um, credit thing. What do you mean a close on your credit? That that the one could get get the information on my credit. Until oh. they resolve this thing. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Of course, don't try to get a loan. Well, I'm not exactly going out and buying property. It takes two seconds to unpin, you know, well, did undo Did you do it. that through Credit Karma? No, that I did That thing I put on your phone? No. Oh. No. Because you probably could have done it through that. But what, so you, what did you say? You don't want either of these companies to reveal your information? Yeah, it's, it's a, it put don't like worry. a stop. Don't worry. You stop it. But they, the other guys have already got it. Well. They've just, already got it. <laughs> They've already got it. You know something? If they want it, I'll give it to them plus the bills. Yeah, yeah. They can have all of it. Well, I mean, um, um, I'm not that worried about it. I don't know why, you know. If my wife isn't, my ex-wife isn't worried about cancer, I guess you I... You almost said it almost again. almost said why. Yeah. You don't like that, do you? Well, because, you know, who is it? Well, I don't see that your name is Bennett. I don't see that you're wearing a wedding band anymore. Well, because I need, it keeps falling off and I need to go get it shrunk. Well, it's been a Either long time. Either that or I got to put weight back on. No. But you know, I don't think I can put the weight back on. Anymore. I don't want you to put it back on. You look good. But I don't think I can. Enough. Because I'm, I'm eating everything except sweets. Although I am doing, you know, sugar-free this and sugar-free that. and I'm, Well, it satisfies your sweet buds. You know, uh, but I'm taking in about 100 carbohydrates a day and whatever. Am I boring you? No. I've just been up since 4. Oh, okay. Well, you know. Nobody and it's 10.13, but I'm not counting. I'm just, just stating a fact. Here's a shout-out to Ann. I told her if Ann and Louie listen to us tonight, I'd give a shout-out. No, well, She's my also, friend. They can also see you. Can, oh, yeah. I told them well, go they, to we, we should that. start arguing. we got a lot of people watching us. We they, could argue. They like us to argue. <laughs> Huh? They like us to they argue. They like us arguing, yeah, yeah. And they always, they always write me and say, you know, uh, she wins. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't mind it. I'm kind of like, I asked uh, Rob Schneider this question yesterday. I said, on the show you do, you play such a fucking asshole. I said, and yet the show is called Real Rob. <laughs> I said, are you concerned that people will think that's you? Think that's you? And he says, no, I don't care. He says, I'm trying to get a laugh. And that character is a funny character that it I've is a funny there. character. And and he said uh, so. I, he says that's one of the best questions he was ever asked. He said, he said no, I don't, I don't care. I I really don't care. He said actually the whole thing is re reverse. I love Lucy where she's Desi, and I'm Lucy, you know. And I'm always the one getting into whatever, and you know she's the one with the Spanish accent saying don't do that, you know. <laughs> Ricky. Ricky. So anyway. You and I are Gracie and Alan. 
Gracie and Allen. Gracie, Gracie Allen was Gracie one Allen person. And George. There George was George and, and Burns. Yeah. George and Gracie. George and the team of George, George and Burns. George and Gracie. Burns and Allen. <laughs> no, I don't think we're Burns and Allen kids. Uh, no. We're not funny. Well, no, uh, no. <laughs> it's just the character of uh, of Gracie Allen was very special to comedy. Oh, she was great. In that she wasn't. Good night, George. She wasn't stupid, but no. she played kind of ditzy but she had this ditzy logic oh, that great. made that in the end always made sense you know and he stood there just like the straight well, man well he was the greatest straight man of all he time. really Some was people say he with was his, the best with, with his with the, the, cigar the, 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 most people don't realize you know it, it's like in magic everybody thinks that when there's an illusionist not a card guy but an illusionist uh, not a guy who uses sleight of hand or whatever but you know he's got a cabinet and he saws somebody in half that the magician is so great, you know, and that the assistant is just his assistant. But the assistant does most of the, the heavy work. lifting and most of the magic, <laughs> you know. And it's the same way with comedy teams. The s straight man, in most cases, was always the best comic of the two because he knew timing, you know. He knew how to play off of that person and how to set up the joke. Uh, and so... When you talk about great straight men, um, you've got to, first of all, you've got to say George Jack, Burns. Ja and Jack no, Benny. No, Jack Benny wasn't a straight man. He wasn't? No, I'll explain Jack Benny in a minute. Okay. Uh, the George other, Burns. The other great one, the other great straight man, if you ever watch him, folks, he's really amazing, is Bud Abbott with Lou Costello. It, the, the, he was one of the best straight men I've ever seen. He was the skinny one? He, yeah, he was the skinny one. The fat one's always the funny one. <laughs> <laughs> Until Martin and Lewis came along, and then the the, the performing monkey was the funny one. Uh, but Dean Martin was a great straight, straight man. man. And then when he no longer had Lewis, he became a great comedian. He was good. He was very good. So you know, uh, the the straight per the straight person has to have all the timing of it. And 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 people said. What do you do on radio? You have all these comics on in the morning. This was in San Francisco. And they do all the heavy lifting. They do all the jokes and everything like that. I said, yeah, but listen closely. I'm setting them up. I'm, uh, my timing is allowing their timing to exist. And that's why they like doing my show. Because and you're I, not overshadowing them. You're uh, allowing uh, them to bloom. I never tried. When I had a comic in and he was getting a lot of laughs, I never tried to get a bigger laugh. I never, I never went for a laugh. I just kept setting them up and setting them up and setting them up. And the theory, there was a theory that Steve Allen had a few years back that was a, a great one that I heard him profess on a show somewhere. He said, when you've got a guest on, on a show, you're bringing him on to do the hard, to do the work. He said, you know, your job is to just sit back and draw him out. And then if he's kind of lacking or something's not working right, that's when you jump in. And work it. And work it, okay? But otherwise, what did you invite the guest for if you're trying to top him? Yeah, and you shouldn't top him. Yeah, so never try to top the guest. That was Steve Allen's first rule. And there was one other rule of his that I, that I paid attention to, and I can't remember what it was right now. So apparently I didn't pay that much attention. <laughs> he only paid attention to half. <laughs> no, but uh, Steve Allen... Uh, uh, and and I'm, I'm no not the biggest fan of Steve Allen, but he, he oh he knew, was he was a master he, though. But I mean, he, he started all that stuff, yeah. man on the street, well, and bringing well, people well, into the well, state. That was all him. No, yes, that wasn't him. It was no, it was no, it was no. Yes, just because you say no doesn't what mean went that's on, true. What went on before Steve Allen had the Tonight Show? I forget. It's called Broadway Open House with Jerry Lester. And Dagmar, Jerry Lester, mm -hmm. was that one of the and they pretty, possible and names? They, they pretty much set up the style. And when Steve Allen came along, he came in the in the in the shadow of that show. And of course, he then also reinvented it. And then even furthermore, Jack Parr reinvented it. Jack Parr, I think, was the best of all of them. Uh, I loved Parr. I, Parr you know, was good. he was maybe the best interviewer alive. But when I first came to New York, um, Steve Allen was. Yeah, was big. But Steve Allen's line about never try to top the guest was the advice that I used the most when it came to comics. You know, when it I'm, came to any interview. Yeah, well, they're not there. You didn't bring a guest in to try and top them. Right. And that you know, I hear that from a lot of comics who go and do these morning shows across the country that they hate doing them 
Because most of these people do morning shows, think, oh, we have a comic on, and then they try to top the comic. And they, they try can't. to be as funny as the comic. And they can't. And the fact is, you brought this guy in to get you some laughs. Shut the fuck up and let him get <laughs> the laughs, you know? <laughs> Uh, I never, I never quite understood some of these morning guys who played top the guest. There was one other piece of advice that Steve Allen had, and I can't remember what it is now. Well, as my mother used to say. Yeah, but uh, uh, you know, he was uh, he was very good at what he did. He was very good, and I love Jack Parr. And uh, oh, but you asked about Jack Benny. Uh, Jack Benny wasn't a comedian. Jack Benny was a clown. Now let me let me describe the difference between a comedian and a clown. A me comedian pulls jokes on people. Okay? A clown has the jokes pulled on, on him. him. And if you ever watch Jack Benny, every joke on that show was at his expense, at his character's expense. Well his facial also his yes. facial, the way he would just But he was really a clown, not a comedian. And it was one of the most original acts in the business. It was great. I mean uh, uh, some of the writing, the people who wrote for him knew how to write for him. And uh, my favorite, my favorite joke ever, my favorite setup and follow through ever on his show was Jackson. This was on the TV show. Jackson, a grocery store, and he's shopping around. A kid comes over to him. He says, "Pardon me, are you Jack Benny?" And he goes, "Yes, I am." And he goes. I play the violin. He says, do you play as good as I do? And he says, I used to. <laughs> now that's, you see, I mean, that's what I'm saying. He's the clown. Yeah, that's good. The joke is always at his expense. Yeah. And I thought, Benny, if, you, if you're a comedian and you're coming up and you, you, know, you think you've got to listen to uh, Chris Rock and people like that, forget it. Go back. And listen to the masters. Li listen to Benny. He's a master of timing. He was. Listen to Bob Hope. He was a master of timing. Yes, he was. Uh, people don't realize this, uh, but he's and he's the first one to say it. Woody Allen based his entire persona on the timing and the character of Bob Hope. Now, if you go and watch him in a movie, in one of his comedy films, and then go watch a Bob Hope film, you'll see the timing's exactly the same. It's I the same reaction. Everything. And he admits it. He admits that he was influenced the most by Bob Hope. That's interesting. Yeah. But uh, so far as timing is concerned, Carson picked up his timing from, from, uh, from Jack Benny. And he admits that because he actually was Jack Benny's replacement during the summers. Oh, really? Yes. So, you know, so, so uh, you know, I mean, uh, but the trouble with comics today is they don't pay attention to those really old comics. And all the basics are there of comedy. They never change. It's kind of like magic never really changes. The basics are there. The presentation changes, but okay. the basics are there. And the basic of all comedy is timing. Or as we used to say, you know what the biggest thing uh, you have to have to have in comedy? It's a t uh, t timing. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, you got to look at those old guys, man, and they were just, they were the best. They were the best. And uh, you never went to the Friars Club, did you, with me, when Steve used to go down to see the, all the old guys get together and give each other a bad time or spend the whole night telling dirty jokes? Mm -hmm. Oh, guys like Freddie Roman and, uh, you know, all the, all the old line Catskill comics. And I went with them one night to this thing. It wasn't a roast. It was kind of like honoring somebody, but then they started riffing off each other. And I thought, oh, this is going to just be you know, a bunch of these old oh, Freddie Roman and yeah, and, and, yeah, and hear the jokes, folks. This was the funniest thing I ever saw in my life. I mean, I sat there in awe of these guys. Their timing, their professionalism, all of that. And that's what these comics today should, to, should look at. Not that you are going to imitate them. Not that you're going to create a style like theirs, but that there are, there are things in their comedy that is has to exist in comedy today or you don't, yeah. it doesn't work. And timing is one of them. And if you watch Benny, you will see Benny would do a take. Somebody would say something to him. Like maybe the kid who said, I used to, and then Benny wouldn't say a word. Or he just and then he would face. just turn to the audience and look at them. He would know exactly when to turn 
and how long to hold the face right. before he then went back to what he was doing. He, and it was, it was milliseconds. I mean, that's how good he was at it. Yeah. Watch him. It's very important to watch him. It's very important to watch Burns and Allen work together. It's very important to watch... Uh, um, Alex the, and, and Mills. And, and Mills. <laughs> uh, Alex and Mills, exactly. Are we losing people? We lost a couple of people. Because uh, we're not arguing. We're not arguing? I don't have anything to argue with you about tonight. We're okay? Yeah. Although I'm living in fear of my PSA test, which I'm not going to take till after the middle Please, of the month. Please, no more... I should get, it out, of, I should get it out of the way, but I don't want my fear early. I want my fear late in the month. <laughs> it's uh, 1025. And I keep reading about these PSA tests, and everywhere they say it's for prostate, folks, that they're, they're not particularly complete, accurate. There are a lot of false po- 25 Only 25% aren't false positives. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So why they keep doing this thing is beyond me. Yeah, you know, so, eh, well whatever so uh how was your week it was a lot of work because i had to catch up um from the week that i was in oh you were you went to hong kong right right so it was a lot of catch up but i'm still not caught up yeah but you didn't seem to have as much of um um, uh, what do you call it Uh, jet lag jet lag and i think the reason was because you did the turnaround fast enough (laughs) yeah that's true you know you didn't do it you weren't there a long time so you didn't you didn't have time to get over the jet lag going there so you you didn't have it although every time i was in my room i was asleep yeah, and there's a couple times. Oh well, that's why if we go to if you go to China, I probably should go with you next time. I would so love we it. So we then spend a couple of weeks because when if you're going to travel that far, it's going to take you several days to get over the jet lag, and so you may as well enjoy yourself, you know. Yeah. But I know it's always in Hong Kong, and I don't want to go to Hong Kong. Well, you could meet me. I could meet you in Hong Kong. No, we're, I could join you after wherever we're going to be, since. I'll be out there. No, let's go to let's go to Vietnam. Let's go to Hanoi. I would love to go, go to, to Vietnam. Hanoi. Vietnam is supposed to be incredible. Yeah. 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 I want to go to Australia too. Now let's go to North Korea. <laughs> right. Uh, a poor kid that came back. They see the two of us arguing. They go, "We give up. We give up." We, you know, what the poor kid that came back from New, uh, North Korea died. Yeah. No. I mean, it, it, it's he terrible. Was it's a terrible regime. But, you know, I mean, I, who I feel sorry for the most are the people there. Yeah. Because they don't know better. You well, know, that's it's, it. It's what happens when you have, when you don't have media. Okay. When you don't have the news people. When you don't have the freedom of, of information going back and forth with the public. So or, they, or if you have it, it's controlled by the government. They think this guy is a, is a gift from God. They do. You know, He's and because they don't know better. Uh, they, they're told all these things about him that are complete lies and bad things about us yeah. and other other places. And so when Trump says he doesn't want, he doesn't like the news people, he's trying to do exactly what uh, Kim Jong Un does. Well, that's how Hitler started too with the news. Oh yeah, well you always go after the news people. Yeah. Peter. But anyway. So. Anyway. So you want you really want me to go to the phone? Well, don't it's ten twenty eight. I'm just. You know, but who's counting? Well, I could have you. Uh, I could have. Can I roll over? Well, uh, if, <laughs> <laughs> can can I roll yeah, on over? Yes, Fido, roll over. Yes, eee. come on over here, Fido. Yeah, roll over. Yep, here you go. She's rolling over, ladies and gentlemen. Here she is. Lay me down and she, do it again. Yeah, here, here she is, right here. That's. I'm wearing it. the same shirt. What? I wear the same shirt. It's like on a hook. Right in my closet, which is right near your office. Yeah, get a little closer to the mic. Ooh. Ooh. Isn't that 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 disgusting? Two old people kissing. Look at hair. Yeah. Anyway, you know, the lines are open. I just opened them up. Why did I open them up? Because uh, I can. Uh, Because he can. And we take calls from people, too. You know, so uh, our number is uh, is Skype, is uh, our ID is GabNet Live, and if you want our phone number, go over to Gab, uh, GabNet.net, Net. and there's phone numbers there. I, I don't have it up right now, so can I can't. Call re- in. I can't remember the phone. I can't remember phone numbers. I always have to look. Well, at you it. know, with the telephones today and with computers today, you don't need to know mm-hmm. telephones. Wait a minute. Let me look here. Uh, yeah, it's three four seven three five two zero zero seven nine. Okay. Uh, who is it? Oh, Charlene. Charlene. She was the first last night too. Hello, Charlene. What? What's with you, Charlene? You're you're the first every night now. 
What? But what's the reason? <laughs> what's the reason for that? Oh, I don't know. Um, you know, I, you guys were funny. Hey, last do me, Friday. do me a favor. Turn, turn off your turn, turn off your TV set. Oh, and I'll tell you why. Off? Yeah, because oh. I, uh, you know, I don't want to get sued by somebody for rebroadcasting <laughs> without permission. Y yeah, without permission. If it were a baseball game, it'd be terrible. You know, there because you go. we'd be it off? Oh. yeah, yeah. That's we'd fine. Sh showing it without. Oh, you have files, huh? Yeah, yeah. We, we I've just had got it. Files. How do you like it? You like it? Well, like for the speed and all that stuff, right? Yeah. How fast is your uh, your bandwidth? Oh, God. You got me on that one. It, I, I it must be okay the, because we're getting a really nice picture from you. The, the tech people, you know, they know that, and I ask them, and that's how I know, you know, if I have it high enough. Usually I have more than I need, I think. But. Well, here comes, uh, here comes uh, stud. Stud, stud 211. Come on. Well, that should open up. And Renee, I, I'm, uh, you're going to have to call again, Renee, uh, because we're going to put, we're going to have to put you. Uh, you're going to have to, you have to call on. Uh, Renee is not calling on the right thing. Oh wait a minute, what oh, is this? Calling. Wait a minute, what is this? I'm having all kinds of problems here tonight. But I'm you're hanging up on. Yeah, everybody. hold on a second. Let me let me hang up on you too, Charlene. Call back. Uh, and uh, everybody should uh, like call back here. This is the IT uh, lesson. Okay. This is the first part of uh, the Because we've got a problem. We've got a problem with uh, our um, our stuff here. It's uh, not working here tonight. It's not putting people on directly, and it should. But I can, I, well, I can do something here. Hold on a second. Let me call Phil. Um, thing. Yeah. Oh, oh, is Phil. There's Phil. There we go. There, there's yeah. Phil. Wait a minute. Hold on. Turn down your audio, Phil. Yeah, hold on now, a let me uh, hang up uh, on you too. Wait a minute. Sure. Hey, wait a uh, minute. Uh, and, uh, Phil, uh, your audio, fun. the show yeah. is coming back yeah. at us. Okay. Okay. There you go. That, that clears it up. Okay, Mike. That clears that up. Now let me go see if I can find Who's Charlene name? here. Let me add sh her to the group. Okay. Here comes here, Renee. and Renee. Let's go call Renee. And call Skype. There we go. All let, right. Let, well, it, let's see if it's calling. Here's Rob. Here comes Rob. It somehow it wasn't allowing me to add people to the group call. And now, now it is. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Uh, Good evening, Rob. Hey, hello. Rob. Hello, Rob. How you doing? How's it going? Good. Yeah, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Here comes Renee. I just tried to call Renee, but she apparently didn't didn't uh, didn't, didn't care. Unknown phone number calling. Uh -oh. well, who is the unknown phone number calling? We have an unknown phone number calling. Who is that? It's Sound like the unknown comic. It's nobody. So let's get rid of them. Remove person. Remove person. Might be the comic with the bag over head. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the unknown phone caller. Yeah. Right. Uh, Hella. Uh, hi, hi, Renee. Hi. Hi, Marjorie. Hello. It's great to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving your eyeglasses. Those look nice. Book oh, glasses. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Charlene. I can see better now, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, welcome to our age. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the reason you get the big ones, right? Like, I never get big ones. And I, that'd probably be better, you know. What, what? I think it depends on the style. What's what? in right now. Who was it that said that they were going to get their mother, like, a, a, ca a cataract lens for her car windshield? Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, Jerry just, Seinfeld, yeah. I just saw the special tonight. Wasn't that good? Wasn't it good? It was yeah, great. it was excellent. Let, let, add to your group. Come on, Jeff's trying to call. Add him to the group. Oh, oh, there, there he is. is. There he goes. Hi. Okay, it's, a little, it's all running a little slow tonight. So. But uh, hello to everybody. How are you, panel? Uh, this is the, the citizen wow. panel thus far. Okay. You know. I'm glad I'm not on my phone because I could see on the laptop I could see all the squares better. Uh, here, you know, the people here comes in the squares. Christine. Hello, Christine. How are you? Hi, doll. How are you guys? Yeah, fine. So we can't see you. So because we can't see you, we don't know when you want to talk. So just jump That's in okay. whenever you want to. Well, it's not okay, but hey, it, we'll live with it. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. So, Phil, how are you tonight? It was a Phil-free oh, night last night. Yeah, it was a Phil-free night last night, and you didn't even tell us in advance. You didn't get a well, permission I, slip. I did, but uh, I think what happened is uh, when I said it, 
uh, someone talked over me and you didn't hear it. I said, oh, is, uh, this is Wednesday. And, and you said, yeah, it's Wednesday. And I said, well, a Thursday is going to be a fill-free night. Uh, but someone must have talked over me. Yeah, wow. I didn't hear it. So when you yeah, didn't call last night, I figured, well, wasn't angst. well, maybe the prostate decided to get him early, you know. So yeah. Yeah. We, we, we didn't know what he was doing. He usually tells us what's going on, where he's going, how, what he's having for dinner, right? Yeah, right. exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was. Uh, it was a payback thank you dinner to Faye's kids for watching the dog while we were at the wedding. Hmm. Wait a minute! Nice. You have to pay them back for watching the dog oh. while you're at a wedding. It was a nice thing to do, you know. It's an it's an excuse thanks. to have dinner, right? <laughs> yeah. So what did you eat? Right. Oh, oh, by the way, how's yeah, your that, diet? That, how's your diet? Sick. How's your diet going? My diet's okay. I'm maintaining. You know, I'm like. <laughs> You're maintaining I'm just, fat? I'm just I'm gaining <laughs> yeah. and I'm not going down. But I mean, uh, yeah. the thing is. Well, listen, I was maintaining 244 for the longest time. <laughs> I felt real good about that. <laughs> you have to maintain. Than you. Uh, so anyway, uh, they wanted to go. They got the pick of the restaurant. Yeah. I would have picked Ruth Chris. But they picked Fusion Bistro. So I get there, and as usual, I'm uh, on time, and nobody else is there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's four, it's seven o'clock, there's four people in the restaurant. Um, so it's seven of my time, which was 10 your time. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, as you get older, you start eating dinner earlier. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a law. No, I, you know, because of the special. The, the early bird no, 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 no. It's not the early bird That's specials. Right. Look. <laughs> Florida. We're, we're at home. We're at home. And yeah, all of a sudden, she'll say to me, it's like Sunday. Uh, so I'm cooking dinner. What time is it going to be ready? Four. And I'm That's going, a late lunch. That's a late lunch. I'm right. sorry. Lunch. Yeah, but it's too late. Tail. It's too late a lunch to have an early dinner. No, okay? it's, it's, it's Sunday lunch. But anyway, we, when, it's after uh, church, which every, we don't go. Every night we eat dinner at six. If she makes <laughs> an appointment at a restaurant, it's six. You know? <laughs> I have to go to bed yeah. in two hours. <laughs> uh, well, when my uh, mom lived in Fort Lauderdale, she was married to her second husband. And uh, at that time... They said, hey, we're going to go to dinner. You know, I was visiting. Uh, I said, it's it's 2 in the afternoon. She says, yeah, but we got to get the early bird special. Yeah, well, that's like a Seinfeld <laughs> episode, you know. Oh, really? That's where, right. Where, where, right. Where they would go, you know. I, Big I, shot. doesn't. It comes after the special. <laughs> yeah, right. Because Jerry didn't right. want to go to dinner. <laughs> yeah. Got some hands <laughs> why is the heat always Why is the heat always on? <laughs> Uh, no, why isn't the air conditioning on? Well, that costs money, you know. I mean, but uh, what I loved about about that whole Seinfeld thing is she doesn't like to watch. She doesn't like Seinfeld, so she won't no? watch it. But, oh, but wow. some of those, some of the, some of the can best shows. laughter. No, no, there's no they can add laughter. laughter. No, they, they add it. No, yes, they did. They, yes, they, no, they did. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. No, they did. No, they didn't. <laughs> Well, if you add laughter, if you add laughter where there's already laughter, then you're being honest about it. No, you're not. And yes, you are. Anyway, no, uh, augmenting. It, it, I don't like no, the it, 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 it was it was some of the stuff there. I mean, yeah. about the especially the stuff in Florida with the father yeah. and the and the and yeah. the people living and in Jack the, Clumpus. Yeah, well, living Cadillac. in. You think I never rode in a Cadillac before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to a Fusion Bistro. Yeah. Uh, oh, then the kitchen, uh, all the food. Yeah, he's going to talk about his dinner all night here. Yeah, go ahead. Well, all the food arrives except mine. So <laughs> I, 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 there's four table. There's four tables occupied out of like thirty. And I, you know, I said to the guy, "Is something wrong?" And uh, he says, uh, "Oh no, it takes it takes a long time to cook spare ribs." I said, all right. Are they making them uh, from well, scratch? I mean, it, what are they, slow-cooked spare ribs, and you have to wait no, six no, hours? No, they were deep-fried, and they sucked. And oh. I still oh. 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 Asian, Asian barbecue. And then uh, the, right. lamb, the lamb chops, uh, they were raw at the bone. So I don't think I'll be going back there. Uh, well, you know. what, but did and, you, and it did you taste com good. Did you complain about it? 
No. Uh, what, what good is it going to do me? The guy, yeah. guy was surly anyway. Uh, you remember Sam Sam Wong's or Sam Woe's, that restaurant in San Francisco yeah. that was on the second floor that the waiters used to yell at you? That was part of the ambiance, the Chinese restaurant? Oh, no, but I, I used to know uh, here in, in New York there was a... Uh uh, a, a dairy restaurant uh, called Ratner's. I remember Ratner's. Yeah. which Ratner's. they had the nastiest waiters than, uh, that ever existed on the planet. <laughs> it was a kosher. A it was a kosher restaurant. In fact, yeah. fact. And, Bill, and I bought butter in there. <laughs> when Bill Graham, oh. <laughs> no, you can get, you can get butter there. No, it was a meat. No, butter isn't meat. No, butter is, is dairy. 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 It dairy. was not a dairy. Yeah. Because yeah. Butter, yeah. the only thing I would get there that I could really eat that was, Blances. well, there was a cottage cheese and noodles I used to get. My mother you know. used to make that. But anyway, oh. Bill Graham, when he closed down the Fillmore, I went to his press conference, and he gave this press conference, and he spent at least 20 minutes talking about how bad the waiters were at Ratner's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he wasn't saying why he was leaving and I'm going to miss New York. It was the one thing I'm not going to miss is Ratner's next door because it's the only place we were able to eat. And they have the nastiest, foulest waiters anywhere. And he goes on and on about them. And it's true. You went in there and all these waiters looked like they were like about 45 to 50 years old. And they had a mother at home they were supporting, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and that was the attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that Sam Wong's uh, or Woe or whatever it was in San Francisco had been there for years, finally closed by the health department. But uh, you'd go you'd walk through the kitchen. The kitchen was filthy. And you walk through the kitchen uh, up to up, up a set of stairs that looked like they should have fallen down two decades ago. And you get into the dining room and then the waiter would say, no, you can have you cannot have that. You cannot have that. You must have this. You know, I. You know, well, so they yell at you. Well, then you do what he says. Of course, exactly. you yeah. better do what he says, or they'll split in the food. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's right. That's right. But no, they they're uh, they're uh, they're uh, uh, yeah. I remember those Chinese restaurants in San Francisco. They weren't the cleanest, but no. man, there was some good but, fucking Chinese food in those days. Oh, it. Yes. Oh, Alex, do you remember the Golden Dragon? No, no. So that's where they had the shootout. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Nineteen people got killed there. Uh, yes, it was a big Chinatown massacre in the seventies. <laughs> yeah, they had, <laughs> they had quite a sale afterwards. Uh, you know, chop suey was at half price. <laughs> oh, jeez, Bill! I can't remember. Did they Wrong. did they reopen the place after that? I seem to remember that incident. They ever closed? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Because I can remember going. We would take exchange students there when they would come into California before they went to their host family. That's what I did, one of my first jobs. And we would take them there for dim sum because it was cheap and we could sit them all in a big room and, and just so feed good. them. Well, what, is that the one off of Jackson Street? It's actually Washington at Grant. Okay, there's one restaurant my brother and I went to. It's off of Jackson, Chinese restaurant. We were watching this little Chinese guy eat noodles. He would stick that bowl as close as he can, shove that noodle as fast as he oh, can. Oh, yeah, and they would do the scoop, yeah. Well, you have to because you're no. using chopsticks and you have to have That's the, the way they all do it. I, yeah. I, I mean, it was less Don't than five minutes. He had, that, he, had that, he had that done, drank his water, yelled at the waiter, give me my check in Chinese, he paid it, and got the hell out. You know, one thing, you go to, you go to, you go to China, yeah. you go to China, and you, you, you wouldn't know the food. I mean, it, you know, it, right. all that stuff. It, it, all that stuff is an American affectation of Chinese right. food. Well, it, there's no in chop. A lot, in a lot of the restaurants, they have pictures. It was R and G lounge. In a lot of the restaurants, place here in Sacramento is pretty close to Hong Kong cooking. Well, I, I, mean, I doubt it. I doubt it because if they're doing things like if they're doing things like chop suey and so on, they're that's doing American, American stuff. Yeah, that's American. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, Alex, R&G Lounge is known for being no, very authentic. Well, wait a minute, hold on a second, hold on a second. Let her, let her talk, would you please? Uh, yes, uh, go ahead. What were you saying? Yeah, the, the R&G Lounge, it's known for being so authentic. In fact, my Chinese friends who, like, came over here, you know, and are fairly on, like, visas, mm -hmm. they were like, this is the closest to home I've ever had in the States. 
Isn't that a pump and it's dance? Disgusting. I'll tell you though. I'll tell you though. In China, what do we have? What was it? Korean bar? Uh, not Korean, Korean barbecue. Noodles, the Korean noodles. noodles. The, the Bla- and black, black, bean, black bean sauce. Black bean sauce. We went back there twice. It, it was, was so just. Oh, it was just to die Great. for. Yeah. And and the Chinese food. We went into one Chinese restaurant one night because it was near our ho- uh, where we were staying. And we went in and we sat down. <laughs> and number one. We couldn't read the menu. Usually they have pictures. They have pictures. <laughs> they didn't have pictures. Of meal. And this restaurant had no pictures. We had to get up and leave because we no. I th- no. We actually we, ate no. Them. We didn't. We stayed. We left. But did we leave? That was the other place where we tried to leave a tip, and the, and he ran after us with the money. Yeah, they would. They don't they take don't, tips oh, over there. We left a tip, and they <laughs> they thought we left the money on the table by accident. <laughs> You know, but uh, no, uh, no, but that was the restaurant where I couldn't read the menu. Too. There was one where we walked out because we had no idea what was on the menu. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, 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 it it's just not the food you're used to over here. Uh, it's yeah. great. It's great. I mean, we'd had some great meals over there. The one thing we didn't do, though, and I'm I we 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 really rue the day we didn't do it is when we were in uh, Gulin. Uh, we were staying at the hotel. And we went for a walk, and there was a KFC. And we didn't go, but mm. we should have because they had things like they have what ro- duck and things like that, uh, stuff that ma- mm. makes it for the Chinese palate. Wow. Uh, and it would have been fun to just try it, ah. you know. But I walk past there are thirty, a, there are almost five thousand KFCs in China. Uh, I walked uh, past the yeah. McDonald's in uh, Seoul. I didn't go in, wow. but when I was there. I took a picture of the window, and you know everything was in <laughs> Korean. I uh, ate at McDonald's in Singapore. Oh. But, yeah. but have you noticed something? No matter where you eat at McDonald's, every McDonald's smells the same. Yeah, that's it was deep. basically When I was in France, same. I walked into a McDonald's and I went, oh, that's that McDonald's smell. It's that French fry. Well, that yeah. must have been the place I ate last night because it, 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 I still have that rancid oil taste in my mouth. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Right. yeah. And with that, I'm going to say good night, guys. Good, good night, nice. dear. Uh, good night, night Marjorie. Good night, Marjorie. Good night. Good night. Good night. She's good night. leaving. Alex, I, not to change the subject, but I have to tell you, I called because you, you and Marjorie were talking about comedy duos, and you said something about Abbott and Costello, and you yeah. couldn't be more correct. Yes. I grew up watching that stuff, and the best That's memories it. I have of watching it with my dad is my dad laughing so hard he was crying. Really? Oh, oh, my, my father loved that show too, right? He well, loved no, it. no, uh, no. Oh, forget <laughs> about uh, Abbott and Costello's television show. I never watched. I watched their movies. I didn't uh, like. Yeah, their that's movies. the movies I used to watch. Hey, I uh, binge watched. Uh, uh, by the way, I, I do my impression of Lou Costello being afraid because he's just seen the Mummy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> Yeah, let's we're see ready. if I can do it. I don't know if I have the breath to do it, but here, here's uh, he's trying to tell Bud Abbott that there's uh, uh, there's the mummy over there, and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, that's well, that's rough to do. That gets rougher every year. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't the mummy played by Boris Karloff in that movie? That was Frank no. Stein. Uh, hey, I watched the first season of uh, Rob uh, <laughs> Schneider's uh, uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I got to say that uh, the first seven or eight episodes mm-hmm. were a lot like uh, uh, that Ansari guy as well as maybe a Larry David and a few Aziz, other things. Aziz Ansari. Aziz Ansari. Yeah. Ansari. Uh, and a little bit like Seinfeld. And then uh, towards uh, eight is uh, episode eight, uh, he started getting mean uh, or meaner. Mm-hmm. And uh, I take the truth. I like the beginning of the. Um, uh, I like the other one because he seems to be more realistic. I, he seems like such a nice person. You know, I never knew him. Well, but, uh, uh, it, it, the the first year we liked it, uh, it, it but this year. The last episode I watched last night, and then I rewatched the last 10 minutes of it, where he went out and literally hired. I talked to Rob today on the phone. Yeah. He hired Ennio Morricone. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Ennio Morricone's work, but if you've ever seen The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and yep. This Full of Dollars, and Bugsy, and The Hateful Eight, and mm-hmm. uh, we could go on and on, uh, that's yeah. music by Ennio Morricone. Uh, he is probably one of the greatest composers of movie music of all time. He makes me cry when I hear his music. Uh, my favorite score of his is Once Upon a Time in America, uh, which I also consider one of the greatest films ever made. And uh, 
he went and hired Ennio Morricone to do the last 10 minutes of music on this show. And it's him leaving to go to China to make a movie and suddenly thinking maybe he doesn't want to. And the music and, and his direction of it and the way he plays it is so poignant that it's really great television. Well, I'm looking forward to the second season because I've been binging the first season. And, you know, overall, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I hope he turns nicer in the second season. No, no, no. He gets, he gets, he gets worse. Really? Yes, he gets it, worse. It seems out of character, but, you know. Well, I, I, it's like I said to him yesterday, uh, you know, and he said it was one of the best questions he, he's ever been asked. I said, you play this guy who's just selfish and obsessed and so on, and the show is called Real Rob. I yeah. said, are, are you are you afraid that people are going to confuse this character with, with who you really are? And he said, that's a good question. He says, all I care about is the comedic effect. Yeah. You know, if the character makes people laugh, then I don't care what you think of me personally. You know? It's it's very funny. I like the skits. Uh, you know, uh, they're they're well done. And his wife ain't bad to look at. No, not at all. And she's yeah. talented. She's very she's talented. talented. She's very, very talented. talented. Uh, and this is the first time she's ever done comedy like that. So she's yeah. really amazing, just amazing. Yeah. Very, very talented. I'm I'm uh, I'm very impressed, and I'm I'm enjoying it. I hope but there's you, more. You seasons. were saying, Rob, that you didn't like the Abbott and Costello movies. No, I loved the TV show. Well, the where TV they incorporated the they incorporated a lot of the bits from the movies, mm -hmm. but I did not. There wasn't one. There is one Abbott and Costello movie I liked. And that's the one with the radio, uh, like there was a radio uh, mystery and somebody gets killed. Uh, and I can't think of the name of it right now. But all the monster movies. all the, got I just, cheesy. Yeah, after Frank is I just the don't, monster I ones got cheesy. Never, but yeah. I love the old that with Mr. Fields and, and oh, Mike that was the, the Cop. And, well, I guess and, maybe yeah, it, it, that show, it, I guess it, 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 it was what Mr. you were Bacha trained Kaboom. on. Oh, because. Bacha you you probably came along too late for the movies. I was alive when the movies came out. Okay, you were alive before they made movies. I was alive. I I hand cranked for uh, D W Griffith, um, uh, and Billy Bitzer, his cameraman. Now, see, I can't remember names, but how come I just remembered Billy Bitzer? Yeah, who right. who, well, once who, you hear that, you'll never forget it. Who was Griffith's uh, 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 photographer? But anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. Um, uh, so I grew up going to the movies and seeing Abbott and Costello. And, you know, when you're a kid, it's funny. When you're a kid, you tolerate stuff differently than you do when you're an yeah. adult. Like I said, I used to love Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis when I was 11, uh, 12, 13, 14. But once I grew up, Jerry Lewis was just a pain in the ass, you know. Uh, yeah. So... Unless you're French. But yet, I do love those same bits when they did them on their well, they, short. The stuff, they were, the stuff they were doing uh, on the TV just, show was more closer to the burlesque show stuff that they oh, did. Oh, maybe. I, just, I, I saw a couple of... Uh, I've seen scenes from their movies where you see certain bits done... Uh, that on the TV show that oh that's the same bit they did on the TV show so I I, I recognize some of it yeah but yeah. Uh, I mean every time I, I could watch those TV shows over and however, over and over however however if you rack up if, every time if you're going to talk I, about, about the masters of of uh, 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 duo comedy there is probably nobody better than Laurel and Hardy. Ah, they're f yes. oh. funny. I mean, but the reason is there's a difference between Laurel and Hardy and every other twosome act. There was always a straight man and there was always a, a goofy guy. Mm -hmm. In Laurel and Hardy, they're both goofy. There's, there's no straight guy there. The only difference is one knows he's stupid and the other one doesn't think he is. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's true. And that's how that worked. And it worked beautifully i mean there are moments in laurel and hardy i look at it and i just go this is the most amazing thing i've ever seen and the no, other comic of oh, course marx brothers the marx brothers mm -mm. It, 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 again though a, a different kind of act mm -hmm. you know uh from the uh uh they were they were they were a group of guys i mean there were four of them in the beginning they're actually five when they started in, in vaudeville um but uh, gummo got out of the business i think he managed them uh, Didn't he buy Wrigley's? Huh? Didn't he buy Wrigley's? 
Who, Gummo? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> but, but there was, you know, there was Harpo Chico, Groucho, and uh, uh, Zeppo. Zeppo. And uh, Zeppo like Marx married a woman who later married Frank Sinatra. But uh, that's another story altogether. And Zeppo was very successful in Hollywood. He was the handsome one, like, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Alex, wasn't uh, the, uh, most of the movies were more like the uh, burlesque, when they used to do the burlesque uh, routines? They, uh, I don't think the Marx Brothers were ever in burlesque. They were more in Broadway theater, believe it or not. Uh, their stuff mm. came out of Broadway theater. The one thing they did once um, once uh, Zeppo left, which is when they left Universal and they went to MGM under Irving Thalberg. Thalberg came up with a great idea. They wrote the script to the movie. Then they sent them out on the road to play all along the West Coast: San Francisco, Portland, uh, Seattle, and they would do the movie, literally do scenes from the movie on stage. Mm. So they could get the timing, so that when they went back into the into the studio, they could then say their lines and anticipate a laugh from the audience. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, a, a night at the opera, a day at the races. I think that was it. Uh, those two films were all rehearsed before a live audience in theaters up and down the, the uh, coast of California and Oregon and Washington. So, so actually, they were just testing out. They were testing what it out more for timing, like what what gets laughs, right? And then how long right. is that laugh, you know? So that when they went into the studio and did the same scene, they would know how long to pause after they said a joke. So uh, because that that's the way the Marx Brothers were. And because of that, and then Thalberg also said, you know, the problem with the Marx Brothers films and why they haven't done as well as they should do is because there's nothing but comedy from one end of the film to the other. And people cannot sustain laughing for an hour and a half. So what he did uh -huh. is he did A Night at the Opera, and then he punctuated the film with boring operatic solos. Okay? So that now you were, you were rested, you just heard the operatic solo, which bored the shit out of you, and now we're back to the comedy. And uh, he, he, Thalberg actually made them a bigger success than they ever were when they were at MGM. Yes, uh, uh, Jeff. Uh, you're muted, Jeff. Take it off mute. You're uh, uh, I'm mute, Jeff. Yeah. One, one moment. Here he goes. He's, Bingo. Oh, there we Sorry, go. guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I try to keep it quiet around here, but anyway, um, Sid Caesar. I thought I thought uh, his yeah. work was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and of course, he had great writers and stuff like that too. But uh, Alex course, the, with Julius Caesar. You know, enough <laughs> of these age jokes, Phil. Uh, <laughs> hey, no sound effects, no age jokes. You know what am I going to do? I'll, I'll go eat Fusion Bistro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, but, well, my father was, was, was silent, though, wasn't it? What? Uh, who? Oh, uh, Sid Caesar. Some of it was, but uh, it, most of it wasn't. Uh, yeah. The funniest thing I have, they have a thing called your show of shows, and if you ever lay yeah. your hands on it, uh, one of the funniest things I've ever seen in comedy was This Is Your Life. A takeoff right, on This Is right. Your Life. I know which one Ed about. Gundy, I think, was the name of the guy or something. And yeah. uh, 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 it is just, it is so over the top and funny <laughs> that you will have tears streaming out of your eyes after watching it, you know. And it was done live on a sa on a, sun a Saturday night, I think, wasn't it? Saturday night? Maybe it was on Friday nights. I can't remember. Maybe it was Sunday nights. I can't remember. I but it was, and the stuff they would do, they would do parodies of foreign films, and they would speak this uh, this uh, gib gibberish French that wasn't French. really French, but yeah. it sounded <laughs> like it. And I mean, Caesar was amazing. He was just absolutely amazing. Uh, and so was the whole cast. Carl Reiner on that show. Imogene mm -hmm. Coca. Uh, Imogene Howard, Coca. Howard, Imogene Mo Coca. Howard Morris. Uh, right, incredible right. people. What, who's the guy? Uh, the, another uh, another guy around the same time. Uh, him and his wife. Jack Benny? No, no, no. Um, oh, Ernie Kovacs? 
Ernie Kovacs. All right. Oh, and, and Edie and Adams. Yeah. Edie Adams, yeah. right. There yeah. you go. Uh, Ernie Kovacs was, was very innovative. Yeah, very innovative. innovative. He used the medium. He played with the medium. Where a lot of people say that's where Letterman got a lot of his stuff yes, from. Yes, absolutely. But what, what what he did is he used the medium. He, he, he was ahead of his time. He, yeah, he, he played with the medium. On the other hand, Sid Caesar didn't. Sid Caesar basically was doing a stage show, you know, right. for a TV Some camera. Some people d didn't get. Uh, oh God, K Kovacs. He was very avant-garde and stuff like that, right? Like yeah, well, Harry. he was less avant-garde in the very beginning, and uh, but his stuff was quite accessible. Later on, when he went to ABC, he became a little more... He really experimented with the medium and what it could do and what it couldn't do. And uh, but he Like was, visually and everything. Yeah, he was amazing. Um, uh, you know, there were, there were quite a few people that... that it, the great thing about the early days of television, and I think, Rob, you can relate to this on certain mm -hmm. levels, is that because the medium just started, there were no rules. And so right. you created the rules. You, and mm -hmm. so some people would just try to do radio programs on television. And others said, no, this is television. Let's do something for television. And the way Charlie Chaplin started uh, it with movies, uh, you know, uh, kind of creating the rules? Uh, I, he was one of the people that created the rules, but there were a lot of people that came before Chaplin doing comedy really? who, who also yeah. created the rules as well. But, but you, have no, you have no rules, and so therefore you have to create them. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it always bothered me that I never, for instance, I was never in on the beginning of radio for instance, because then maybe I could have said, you know, maybe if we did this and we could do this with it and you, you could play mm -hmm. with it and do a lot of things and it was theater of the mind and it was terrific. I was too late for that. And I was too but late there for... there at the beginning of video. Well, television came while yeah. I was alive, but I, it wasn't something that, uh, you know, that I could be part of while it was being kind of defined and so on. The, what but, finally happened... You, well, what you know. finally happened was cable came along, and I had a chance to define that. Yeah. You know. public, public access, it was Alex, right? Well, it was public access, and it was public lease. In, uh, in yeah. Manhattan or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, we ran commercials and stuff like that. But, but it, was, uh, uh, it, it was a medium that could be defined because it hadn't been. Because before, you couldn't do anything you wanted to on, on regular television because you'd get arrested and thrown in jail. Mm -hmm. But you could do it on cable because there were no rules for cable. And so right. we then went, and the reason I did a sex show wasn't because I wanted to push the boundaries of sex, but because that was the one thing I could do that we pushing the boundaries of broadcasting. You know, Alex, Robin Bird came after you, right? You yes. weren't doing Midnight Blue with her. Robin Bird, she, Robin Bird was a <laughs> loser. Jesus Christ. I know, she had the worst show. When I moved to New York, I had that Channel J, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, she was the worst. Oh, my God, it was the worst show in the world. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, uh, there were a lot of terrible shows on, on early cable, on public access. I mean, I, um, I got an idea once. I was watching. There was this guy, and I can't remember who his name was, who used to just, uh, Richard Rothman. And he was a publicist, and he had a show. And, of course, on public access, you're not supposed to make money off public access. But what he would do is he would sign these clients to, for publicity for like, you know, pennies on the dollar, right? And then what he would do to give them exposure would be to put them on his TV show. And so he would then collect the money from them for the promotion because he put them oh, on his wow. TV show, right? Yeah. So Who's a guy in you, San Francisco you, like that? Well, you should, no, but we watch, yes. you'd watch Richard Rothman and all these people would come on with their various talents and some of them were just horrible. I mean, it was like the most horrible talent show oh. you ever saw in your life. Occasionally, it'd be somebody who was really good. And so I watched this one night and I said, I got an idea for a show. Let's do a talent show where every, you know, there's good talent and then there's some absolutely terrible talent. And before I could do it, Chuck Barris came out yeah. with the gong show. But that was, I, I came up with the idea for the gong show before the gong show was on the air. And I just, somehow I couldn't get everybody together to put this show together. But uh, to me, that would have been wonderful. And they, but you had people on public access that were just, uh, uh, there was, uh, what was her name? They called her the, the Shirley Temple of cable television. She was like this 65-year-old woman who was falling apart. And 
she would wear frilly dresses, and they would call her the Shirley Temple of Cable. Uh, it was uh, it was an amazing time. Yes, uh, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I remember one thing that was so strange, <clears throat> and it was a Sylvia Schickman. That was her name. Excuse me. Her name was Sylvia okay. Schickman, the Shirley Temple of Cable. Yes, go ahead. So this was a business show, and and. Uh, the one guy was there all the time, and, and he would interview people who had some kind of business. And he, and he it was very strange. You don't know whether or not he had to pay. The, I think he had to pay these people to be on TV. To see yes. Them. Anyway, so it sounds pretty boring and dumb. But the guy who did it was mm -hmm. like a general at one time. He used to work for Nixon or something. And he uh, had a, a real, uh, at one time, uh, I think it was Nixon got sick, and this guy tried to take over the country. Alexander yeah. Haig. Haig, that's the guy. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever I, see uh, Haig show? Yeah. Oh, well, he was the one that got up and said that I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm the, uh, I think this was after uh, Reagan. Reagan was uh, shot, Reagan said shot. that I'm, I'm in charge. Hey, well, he yeah. was the Secretary of State, and hey. I think he said he was ready or he was, you know, able to lead or something to that effect, just in case the line of succession led to him. Because uh, right, the vice president was no longer, nobody could find him, I think. Yeah, but he wasn't on cable TV. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Alexander Haig. Hey. Uh, and... Uh, so, you know, there was a guy in San Francisco that did a, did a show uh, in the 70s, and he used to wear a tuxedo. He was a heavy set gay guy with a lot of personality, and he would charge merchants, especially around Union Street, to, uh, to expose their business, and he would make these, uh, th these videos. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but you know, he, he'd be jumping and bouncing off the walls wearing a tuxedo. Where, where did you something. see these? Videos? Huh? Where did you see uh, these? Saw it on TV. What? He bought time. Uh, well, I guess the people paid for time. They they treated it like an infomercial, an early early infomercial. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you, anyway, nobody, nobody remembers that one. Anyway, huh? we have a low level of listeners tonight. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know why. I guess because we're not yelling and screaming about uh, politics. Yeah, it was probably okay. It's better for. Plus, it's also Friday night, and kids are back in high school, and there's football games. I don't know. I don't know. So I, I'm. Uh, it, yeah, it's quiet. It's a quiet night tonight. I, I'm usually not this quiet, but what the hell? Um, is there anything happening? Alex, in I, I grew up going to your show a lot, and I yeah. remember how great Rob was yeah. coming to your show. And I, you know, you were talking earlier how you would not overshadow your comics and mm -hmm. you never did yeah. and i'll tell you i can some of my best memories are some of this stuff that ruben did yeah and um schneider bobby slayton i'll never forget you were mr anti-sports and one of the one of the news stations came in because you were the one that didn't care about the super bowl yeah. And Slayton was there, and he had on a T-shirt that said 40 fucking Niners. And I remember the producer for the camera, for the uh, uh, crew on site was like, Well, the crew that came, the, no, the producer. crew that came by was the Today Show. And uh, they, the they said, show. we want to interview you because you're the only person we know who doesn't care that there's a, uh, a, a, a Super Bowl going on. I think it was down at Stanford is where it was going to take yeah. place. Yeah. And, yes, exactly. And oh uh, and I said, yeah. I see. They said, and they said, why? Why don't you care? He said, well, I don't like football, and it's great for me. I said, well, they said, why? I said, because while everybody's watching the game, I'm out having sex with their wives. <laughs> and it never made it to the Today Show. Yeah. <laughs> no, it didn't. But Slayton was so funny that day. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, uh, we have uh, we have our. Uh, uh, but uh, let me see here. I was just uh, let's see here. Oh, what, what's his name? Rice is it? Is that his name? Price. Price. Say, well, I got. I didn't just didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't get the P. Uh, Price uh, uh, tonight quit. He, he well, he was fired. Well, he was fired, but he quit. You know, he quit. Is fifty-one thousand dollars back? Huh? 
he paid fifty one thousand or fifty two thousand. Yeah, but for you know how much on the plane. Yeah, but you know how much the, those seats. You know how much those planes cost. Yeah, more over, than fifty one thousand. Over a million dollars. Right. Over a million dollars. But what happened was he made a deal with Trump before uh, a few other things came out, and he paid for his seat, which happened to be like fifty-one thousand dollars. My question to you is: Did he get his money back when they fired him? <laughs> you know, if, if, you fifty-one thousand for what seat? He rented whole planes. I understand, but he his gesture was to pay fifty-one thousand or fifty-two thousand dollars, which was the value of his seat. Yeah, uh, uh, and uh, you and know that something. Was going to uh, look, look, look. When you've got somebody, and you know this from running a business, when you've got somebody in your business stealing from you, and you don't know they're stealing from you, then maybe some of the other employees will take the lead and steal from you as well. Am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in this case, uh, I'm not going to blame uh, Price completely, because really. Uh, the 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 hen house so is what was the rooster the what he called the fox was ruling the hen house, and 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 all he was doing was doing what he thought Trump would think was fine. Well, Trump, yeah, which, uh, I guess he didn't think it was fine. According, uh, no, according he didn't think CNN he was is, fine until it got found out. But where was yep. he as president to know what was going on? Or, so, but according Rob, according to C according to CNN, he was not fired because of the flights. Oh, uh, he was okay. fired because he violated Trump's first principle: never uh, ever make the boss look bad, especially in the press. I I, I thought it was because he wasn't uh, he he spoke about uh, not taking plane trips on the on the uh, on the people's money the same way they spoke about Pelosi. And now he turns around and does the same thing. Uh, I think it was was it Trump that said that nobody in his administration was going to do that, and then Price did it. So uh, made I don't, the boss look bad. Well, no, he 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 violated his directive. Uh, yeah. and, and he I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember the directive, but I guess there was it, one. Well, it, it was, was during the campaign. Uh, he he spoke about uh, Pelosi and a number of other people uh, taking uh, plane, private plane fly, uh, uh, chartered plane flights instead of flying commercial, and so now Price did the same thing. The yes, uh, um, um, uh, boy, my mind is a blank. Time. Charlene, I was going to say, do you mean me? <laughs> no. Um, how many is this now that have bitten the dust so far? Is that off the topic? Or? I think it's the whole cabinet now. <laughs> I mean, he's unprecedented with this, right? Well, How many people has he lost? This? We've never seen, a, you know, a president do something like that, right? The vote has her own plane. And uh, we have to get rid of her, too. I hope well, she Betsy knows. DeVos has her own plane that she owns, you mean? Yes. Yeah. That she uses. And does she charge the? Does she charge us for the fuel? I doubt it. I think she can. You know. Uh, I, 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 that's never, that hasn't come up, but I, I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I think the double digits now of the people who are leaving the ship of Trump. Oh, they didn't leave. They got ousted. Well, there have been those who have been ousted. There have also been those that have left. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and it, it, you know, and for a guy, by the way, for a guy who says, and I, I can't believe this, for a guy who says that uh, he. Uh, 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 used to give Obama a bad time for reading teleprompters. This yeah. guy never takes his eyes off the teleprompter. He reads everything, except every now and then he'll throw in the word, and that's a big one, you know, and then he'll go back to his, his prepared script. Uh, it's he, hieroglyphics. No, but I mean, for a guy, remember how he used to put down the president for yeah. using oh, a yeah. teleprompter yeah. and all these people using their teleprompters? I don't need a teleprompter, blah, blah. Well, apparently you do. And everywhere he goes, you don't feel that he's saying anything that isn't canned and prepared. You know. Aren't you glad? Well, the trouble is he then goes, he, he says something's prepared and it's carefully thought out, and then he reads it, and then he goes on and he tweets and screws the whole thing up, you know, and completely yeah. countermands himself. You know, I, yeah. I, I, Has he been tweeting a lot lately? Huh? Has he been tweeting a lot lately? I hadn't heard much in the news. Maybe they're tired of it. Uh, uh, he, uh, 
He's been tweeting. Yeah, sure. But, you know, uh, I mean, last week, I mean, come on. You know, what is it? He In two days, he hasn't tweeted anything obnoxious. All last week, it was the whole thing about the uh, the football teams, you know. Yeah, uh, all last week. Yeah, that was it. You're not a patriot if you if you take a knee at a football game and you're our bitch, so you should shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now he hasn't gone to Puerto Rico yet, uh, but that is not. <laughs> week. He's on his way. He's going right. Yeah, well, I don't know when he's going, but he says he's going. I I guess he's supposed to go next week. Yeah, that's really going to help. Tuesday, you know, I think, yeah. I think you know. I think rather than you flying down there. To do just a photo money. op, it would be nicer if you just sent help, you know? Oh, so helps he's on the lying. Way. Wait a minute. You said, has he been tweeting? He, the last tweet I think I heard was that he's saying that they have a lot of water over there. That he, You know, they're sending water, water. But then I read that there isn't enough water. So he's, Can't you know, get the doing water that shit again people. where he's... Every yeah. time, you know, even... No, they're getting a lot of rain, but the water is not drinkable that is over there. Yeah, and the water that the water and supplies they have, they're having trouble disseminating it out to uh, the people because the roads aren't open. They they have uh, debris which they're trying oh, to clear. Not uh, to interrupt, Phil, but he said they have, enough. Enough, they have enough supplies and they have enough water. That's what he tweeted, and they no, don't. I, they don't have enough. But it, there's one problem: all the tra- all the trailers. They're sitting at the dock. You don't have enough truck that's drivers. That's what it is. That's right. it, right? Yeah. So they can't so, disseminate it out. And then they were talking about the ship, the Comfort, which uh, just uh, left port, and they and it, I guess it needed four or five days to get ready to leave port. But the problem was 35 foot seas, so they were unable to <laughs> right away during the storm. Yeah, and so, they had to wait until the sea subsided. <clears throat> but uh, then it took a few days, so it's 11 days since the uh, since yeah. the uh, event. Jeff, and, and now that hospital ship's on its way. I remember. Uh, seeing World War II movies all the time. Yeah. That they're all the army had trucks. I mean, thousands of trucks. And <clears throat> there must be lots of truck drivers who who are still somehow in the army doing that as part of their jobs. I, 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 I yeah. I, I can't believe that we don't I, have I think Trump the problem Trump. here the, the problem here is that. is that that Trump talks a good game but he doesn't do anything. And that's what yeah. I think is the problem. Uh, we need to give it took him to it took Caribbean. I mean while while they were devastated yeah. in Puerto Rico, he was going after the NFL. You know, he wasn't even talking about yep, Puerto try, Rico. Trying to change he was about three or four like days late on that one. And when he was finally assailed about it, all of a sudden, oh, well, we're sending people down there and I'm going down there and all of that. It was damage control over not paying attention to it. And, yes. and today he's playing golf again. Yes. Renee. <laughs> Royal Caribbean has sent a ship. Wait a minute. You're, bre- you're breaking up a little thousands bit. Thousands of people from <laughs> It landed today in in Miami itself, and it's going to turn around. So if you're looking for a cruise ship that wants to put its money where its mouth is, Royal Caribbean and those people have done just that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I I got a silver medal in the Royal Caribbean because I uh, I, I came in, uh, I, I think it was a gold medal. I came in first in the belly flop contest. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> Well, good. That should help all the people in Puerto Rico. Yeah, well. You know, I mean, it's um, it's it, it's a true tragedy. A hundred percent of that island is decimated. Yeah. Literally a hundred percent. There are other no islands. Power. Right. They're, they have absolutely no power. There's, there's one that starts with a B, like Bonos or something, uh, that was completely wiped out. Ninety uh, percent of the houses are gone. Now, it's not an American island, but I also think... That well, in the, the case uh, of Puerto Rico, number one, these are American citizens, and number two, millions of them. Yeah. Okay. Three yeah. million people. Three million? Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is terrible, yeah. Yeah. What do you do with uh, with this on an island? How do you get aid to three million people? You know? Uh, do you have any ideas? What would you do? I wonder if t- Trump even knew that the people in Puerto Rico were American citizens. <laughs> Oh, the way he is with all hey, that. Yeah, he probably is New York. He was a New Yorker. You know, he knew that they were all there, but they all carried stilettos. So what do they need? Is- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, Brian. You've been quiet. Hello. 
<laughs> yeah, cut you, man. Hello. Cut you. <laughs> Hello. Um, have yeah. you heard that um, OJ is going to be released in the next couple of days and that the state of Florida has said he's not welcome there? Right, right. I heard that, Rob. Well, well, we'll see how that holds uh, up in the Supreme well, there's, Court. There's yeah, a, I mean, that's wrong. But I, we certainly that's have fun. the right to travel between states. Uh, we have that freedom. No, uh, but he's on probation. Yeah, but not that, probation. Uh, but that, has, that has parole. nothing, to, that has nothing yeah. to do with and, it. And when you're on parole, they have to accept you uh, at, at the thing. And then uh, if he violates his parole, maybe he can't leave a certain well, state. Well, I would say fuck Florida. I, I yeah. would say it anyway. But so uh, I would say fuck is Florida. It's one of those states that allows uh, him not to be, uh, has to do with the money that he owes the Goldmans. Uh, right, right, yeah. Yeah, that's why he's there. The civil, the civil. And his kids are there. But the point is, you know, that uh, just like O.J. went to prison in uh, in Nevada, not for the crime he committed, but for the one they assumed he had committed. Mm -hmm. uh, Stealing the, trophies in uh, the same, 2007. Yeah, the, I mean, the other people who were the, in on that with him did not get 10 years in prison. Because they got, got off nothing. because they the testified gun? against him. Like, well, well, that had, wasn't the only the reason. Was OJ, OJ had the gun. OJ okay, had the well, gun. If, if OJ had the gun, he was also kidnapping. Uh, and, it uh, was, I think. I don't yes. think OJ had the gun. I, th I think that was one of the things they said. He didn't have the gun. Somebody the else gun? had it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, let me, it. let me see if you can find it. But, I mean, the point I'm trying to make here is uh, lay off this guy. You know, to begin with, Forget about what happened in California. He was found not guilty, and so you live by that decision, just like we live by the decision that Trump is our president. Okay, just right. accept pretty it, much. Right. Uh, but uh, and don't and if Nevada, if Florida doesn't want him, it's not because he was in prison in Nevada, or because he you know stole trophies that belonged to him. It's because of what went on in California, and that's wrong. It's inherently wrong. But mm -hmm. I leave it. I understand why Florida does this because they're fucking assholes. Is yeah, it possible that he owes taxes? Oh, I hate Florida with a fucking passion. <laughs> I know you do. I remember. Oh, I heard. Yes, I do. Yeah, I mean, uh, Nichols and May used to have a line they used in their act, and I would apply it to my hatred for uh, uh, Florida. I hate them with hot heaping hunks of hate. <laughs> so Simpson denies that he carried the gun. Uh, I, I don't. Um, it and says, it looks and, like it was never proven. Yeah, and uh, and they also deny that they broke into the hotel room. Uh, I guess uh, they just, according to him, they, they went in, they took the items, and and that was that. You know, but, and, and, and let's say he did kill his wife, and let's say he did kill Ron Goldman. I mean, come on, everybody's entitled to a cranky day. Yeah, <laughs> I've thought about never that. Put that man's head for PMS or anything like that. But yeah, but, but uh, having a mouth problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I would recommend uh, no women should be his oh. first date for the for the year. Well, you well, know, uh, he has that rage probably is that rage. Well, if I were him, I wouldn't I wouldn't date because they everybody's going to tell tales out of school. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. people right now, so, if, so any, story, if anybody's right, going to be yeah. taken advantage of, it's going to be OJ. Everybody's going to be trying to get an interview with him. People are women. Women are going to want to go out with him so they can then yell rape. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, it, 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 it's not a good life to be OJ Simpson. He probably had a better life in prison. OK, he probably so mind, he's probably gay. You know, well, wait, a minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Brian's saying something. Yes, Brian. I think a lot of people have a better better time in prison because they carry that stigma with them when they're let out. They have the scarlet letter on their forehead, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're either absolved when you when you get out. There's no you can't vote because you're a felon, like they do again in our illustrious state of Florida, uh, among other states of the union. And uh, you know, when you when you're done, when you served your time, you served your time. Now, if it's uh, like somebody who uh, you know a pedophile or something, then and you know what? Either keep them in jail, keep them in prison for the rest of their natural life, mm. or when they've served their time, they've served their time. I've never gotten the term pedophile. To me, it sounds like somebody who's hot for feet. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Or they like pedicures. Yeah. So there is a term for that. The, on the OJ thing, the uh, the two guys, Bruce Fromog and Alfred Beardsley, mm -hmm. were the guys with the gun. They were uh, his friends. Too. And they and they got what two years apiece or something? Yeah. So no, yeah, those were the guys. First degree kidnapping with a deadly weapon uh, um, for for both of them, and uh, uh, coercion with a deadly weapon. But uh, they don't have uh, they don't have OJ in any of these things. Uh, just conspiracy to commit a crime, conspiracy to commit kidnapping, and conspiracy to commit robbery. Do and they get jail time? Possession. Do people that are with them, no. do they get no, I don't think so. Uh, they did get oh, time minimal, time. minimal, minimal time. And, and another thing, it's possible that he owes taxes to the state of Florida because he had more than one house down there because nobody wanted him but Florida. Yeah, but I don't think you can. Florida. I don't think you can physically keep somebody out of a state for anything like that. I mean, I've never heard of, of a person not being allowed in a state. Hell, this this is the state that allowed Ted Bundy to live there for Christ's sake. Uh, there, there's been a number of uh, murderers and child molesters that they've kept out of certain towns. Like uh, they'll take them and they'll want to house them in, let's say. Pittsburgh, and then the people of Pittsburgh, California, will rise up and say, "We don't want him in Pittsburgh. Uh, he was going to move too close to a school." Well, you, you know, uh, you know why that's bull you know why that's bullshit. Because if you know this guy is a, uh, a, a, a pedophile, a pedophile uh, and he has a criminal record, and he has to register wherever he goes as being a sex uh, offender, yeah. uh, you know he exists. You know he's there. It's the ones, the ones you got to worry about. Tank, the ones yeah. you got to worry about are the Ted Bundys who you don't know. Are, yeah, remember are, the guy in California that cut off that woman's hands, uh, got her in a van, cut off her woman's yes. hands, threw her on the roadside, and they finally and they found him. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd killed a number of people, yeah. uh, and so they convicted him. And, and that was one of the guys that they wouldn't let live in a certain town once he was paroled. Uh, oh, I, I remember this, Phil. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the one, point right? is, the point is, you know who this guy is. I mean, where is he supposed to go? I mean, if he can't live anywhere because every community is going to throw him out, where is he going to live? I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind living next door to a sex offender, a registered sex offender, because he's registered. I know who he is, and I know what he's capable of. I tell my kids, what don't play in his yard. What if We're it was one of those school teachers from Florida, the sex offender school teachers, those hot 25 year Oh, well, those, those, those women should be given a blue medal. Uh, <laughs> yes, Renee. It, it, it's, you're talking about a criminal and a pedophile. A pedophile we don't have answers for. We don't know how to make them stop being pedophiles. We don't know where to house them. We can't let them loose in neighborhoods. They're safer until we figure out what makes them tick. They're safer in a trailer on the grounds at prison than they would be in, in the neighborhoods where people have children. Pedophiles, we don't have answers for those people yet. We well, don't know it. Well, I, I think we, we have certain drugs, though. We can, the, 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 what's it called? Depravera? Oh. Uh, uh, that they can give them that, that takes away their sex urge uh, if they agree to take that certainly. If they agree to take it, and we don't. Uh, I, what have to stay guys, on. I, most of those guys wind up in the Senate. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> don't they just castrate them? Tell them, them we'll let you go. We'll let you go. Well, that's it, it, uh, uh, Rob. You know, I mean works. that uh, that unfortunately comes under the the, the uh, er, area of uh, mutilation. No, but and wait, I'm talking with consent. With consent. Chemical with consent. Chemical. Well, there is, well, go? Deprovera is chemical castration. Yeah, that's a chemical, yeah. yeah. That's exactly what we, it's used for. Yes, Renee. We're not 100%, we're not 100 a hundred percent sure woman. that wait, wait, wait. works. I married a Jewish woman. That's castration. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. Just have them marry a Jewish woman. Thank I think God that's Marjorie's it. Marjorie's asleep. She'd come in and cut your balls off. Yeah. <laughs> that. What did I tell you? <laughs> what do you mean cuts my balls off? She's got them in the bedside next to her. You know. Right. And that's why we love her. Yeah. She takes them with her purse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I I, I think that we, 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 it's kind of weird that we look upon ex-criminals as being still criminals. And that once they've served their time or their debt to society, so to speak, that we then should welcome them back into the society with a certain amount of open arms and allow them to try and live a, a, a fruitful life 
and yeah. and and uh, be be a good member of the community. But when, we, the but, when, but when we but when we next to me. But when you go to prison and you come out and you just you can't find a job and this and that, you're yeah. going to wind up back in prison. I'll tell you a great story quick. My father was a violinist and he used to play in the San Quentin Orchestra. Now my father was never in San Quentin. What happened was is they had a, uh, a radio show called the San Quentin Hour uh, whose theme song by the way was My Time Is Your Time. <laughs> and uh, 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 they uh, they had an orchestra uh, for the San Quentin Hour where inmates would perform and sing and dance and whatever. And it was on radio. And they would hire some musicians from the San Francisco Local 6 in San Francisco to go over there to fill out the orchestra for the instruments they didn't have. And what they didn't have enough of were, were fiddle players. So my father went out there every week and got a check for being in the San Quentin Orchestra. One of the guys he was playing with was, was a, uh, an inmate. And he got to know him pretty well. And finally, the guy got paroled. And he, uh, he said, I'm being paroled next week. And he left, and he was gone. And about three weeks later, he's back. And he said, what happened? He said, I wanted to finish the series, so I robbed a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I broke oh, yeah. parole. I broke parole. So here I am, back in the orchestra again. He wanted to finish the series. That's what I call commitment. Yeah. That's right. Dedicated. <laughs> On two levels, by the way, I might add. <laughs> yeah. You know. So, I mean, uh, but, I mean, it's a question of how we, how we treat people when they get out of prison. The recidivism rate is rather high. Oh yeah, and it's also because we indiscriminately throw people in prison who would be better off getting off with uh, with you know an ankle bracelet or any one of a number of other things rather than throw you know a, a guy who sells marijuana and then gets thrown in prison. I mean, what a what a waste. Well, yeah. I don't of, think that's happening as much anymore. Not though. as yeah, much any anymore. Hopes of that. Right. It's, what? It's going to go back now that you got Sessions in charge oh, of the that. DOJ. Yeah. So, you I got mean, these people that go to prison for uh, hacking up uh, people well, and, 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 and murder and mayhem. Why not be, let them become butchers? You know, give them some chicken, give them some beef, let them cut it up. Yeah, and, and, and by the way, give them the tools to do it with, Phil. Well, after sure. they parole them, after they parole them, you know, they, they you put them in the union. Give me a release, yeah, release on uh, rock, I mean, like Corona <laughs> and... Uh, yeah. Well, uh, by the way, I hear you union. hacked up Mrs. Johnson. How are you with beef? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put them in the butcher's union. Exactly. It's a good exactly. job. Yeah, that'll rehabilitate them. Yeah. And, and it helps slower, you know, uh, you know, hey, the lower. Hey, uh, hey Bob the just I mean, Bob killed three house. people with a hammer. He'd be good at putting flooring in. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was such a star. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I mean, uh, so I, you know, I'm. I, I, in a way, I have. There's a certain part of me <clears throat> that feels sorry for OJ. I don't know why. You know, I feel sorry for the fact that he 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 really got a miscarriage of justice where Nevada was concerned, and it was a get even for what went on in L.A. or what you was what assumed went on in L.A. What? OJ OJ was a hero to the uh, to the American people, and he was on top of the world and got knocked knocked off well you know something isn't isn't that one of the saddest most yeah. saddest stories you ever heard in america that yeah, this absolutely. person who absolutely. had a certain greatness all of a sudden had this fall from grace that was she perhaps was the hardest plummet everyone. that anybody's ever taken right and alex uh, it's sad because he that was all of his personal stuff family photos and things like that well yeah so but that's uh, why uh, he was like uh, emotional uh, and he wanted the stuff back it was some of you know pictures of his kids or something you know and uh, i guess he just let his emotions get carried away i think like, it's it wasn't one of them was, wasn't one of the things his heisman trophy yes it was the heisman yeah, but yeah. Alex like, and and Ellie, him, right? at, at that point i think he felt he was above the law after he was uh, uh was uh, uh, uh exonerated from the uh, murder uh i think that he felt that nobody could touch him I don't and, think so. And, you know something? You know, well, he, why don't we? Why don't we? Maybe I hate to say this, but why don't we, for a moment, consider that maybe OJ isn't as bright as we'd like to assume he is? 
That's a possibility. You know, I mean, this is a guy that grew up in the in the projects in right. San Francisco, yeah. right? And yeah. and and it, it, it Dave, you. Yeah, and even though he attained a certain um, uh, acceptance notoriety, among the like white notoriety. among the white community and notoriety, uh, still there was inbred in him that certain I don't know street cred. Street cred. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I mean, his mother was a strong woman. Uh, he was uh, an athlete from an early age where he was learning discipline. And as, as much as he would go home at night and sleep in the Bayview Hunters Point area, he was still exposed to, uh, <coughs> to, you know, to the athletic programs and to uh, people, coaches that would uh, take uh, and, and make his um, growth a, something that was important. Uh, he had opportunity because of his sports ability that other kids didn't have. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. I agree. So, you know what I find fascinating is I read something recently that his children do not believe their father killed their mother. How could they? You know, uh, they you lose know, everybody. Yeah. Well, you know, there are, there are all kinds of theories. Uh, right. that, you know, to begin with, I, I can't say, f uh, can anybody here say with 100% surety that O.J. was guilty? No. I mean, there is, an, no. uh, there is a window no. there of possibility that he was, maybe he was uh, taking the rap for somebody else. That has been one of the uh, theories that's been put, huh? I think they said his kid. Well, uh, was uh, that was one of the theories, but what I'm saying is, is that, you know, there may be a, another answer to all of this, but what muddied up the waters in the whole case was the fact that, well, it's like somebody put it, the uh, the L.A. Police Department was trying to frame a guilty guy, you know, yeah. uh, and, and it backfired. They up the evidence. See, and, I, and I believe, yeah. I believe in it with all my heart that the uh, LAPD was trying to uh, make frame. it stick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it and should, have been, a, it should have been a mis, it should have been a mistrial because of the evidence uh, screw up and everything. Right. Else. What do you do? What do you mean a mistrial? Does that mean you try to try you try to try him again or a oh, mistrial? Yeah. A mistrial, yeah, does allow for a retrial. Yeah, so you can't retrial. You can't retry if you don't have any evidence. The evidence is tainted at that point. It was tainted it because was no tainted. question about it incorrectly. Yeah. But, you know, I, let, me, let me bring up another case in L.A., you know, that came up again this year, is the Polanski situation. Oh, yeah. Exactly. You know, in which that's even even one. the woman who supposedly the was his, was his victim. She forgives him, right? She, she's so angry that they keep going after him. He's like, what, 80-something years old or something? Uh, and yeah. she feels sorry yeah. for him that he could never come back back to you know this country like that it's it's awful well they he, keep persecuting he, himself, him. he can always watch himself in the movie chinatown yeah but the point <laughs> the, no, you can also watch the movie he directed and did a superb job of uh yeah. the man the man left this country and still became remained a superb director superb enough to and win another academy anybody. award for best director he's not guilty of murder i mean he, you know the jack nicholson's nose yeah well anyway the point that i'm making uh, is that in the case of Polanski, I think that is a great kind of misjustice. Yeah. You know, and that what they want him to do is they say he can come back to the United States and if he pleads guilty, they'll let him go. Well, he doesn't want to plead guilty because he, yeah, already, he, already, he already made a deal with the police and they didn't live <clears throat> up to it. You know, that's why he ran out of the country. What? what was the, the deal what was, was the, the deal was is that he would cop a plea... <laughs> And that yeah. they would give him something like a month in, in prison, they would, yeah. you know, and that that whole deal uh, they didn't honor. And when he found out they weren't going to honor it, he got on a plane and took off. But that the, they they were willing, they were trying to settle the whole thing, and yeah. uh, he he was agreeing to it, and and yeah. then they went back on their on their word. Uh, it so. was a you know a, a kind of a terrible situation for him. On the other hand, he's not an American. So he he's not. It's not like he can't back come back to his homeland if he wants to come back to his homeland. I think he goes to you know Poland or someplace like that. I think wherever right. he was. But is he living in Paris? He's living in Switzerland or now. Switzerland. Well, they'll string him up in Poland. He was in Paris. Yeah, and, and there was some issue over. Yeah, uh, yeah. and the they finally they finally decided that he could travel anywhere he wanted to in Europe. That he was not a wanted man in Europe. 
but you know, I mean, uh, they've made it difficult on him, and yet all through it, he's made some pretty good, damn good movies. You know, when he Paris, amazing movies. Extradite him. What? When he was in Paris, were they talking about extraditing him back to the states? Yep. Was that yep. what happened? Well, yeah. well, he wanted to come to accept an award or something, didn't he? Right. Did he ever get to do that? And he what, come to the United States came, to accept an award? No. Because no. if he came here, they were going to definitely arrest him because that thing still holds, right? Yeah. That if he ever comes back, you know. Now, yeah, some some good lawyering could probably get him out of it. Okay, I mean, at this point, a good lawyer could probably go in and make a great case that you know. Uh, you know, that this is a long time ago, and the woman who was involved in it is, is saying, you know, let him go, and uh, he's had an exemplary life, blah, 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 blah. And he could take the chance of coming back and having some good lawyering, getting him off, which probably but it's he not would. The woman that brings it's not the worth it. But who, who, wants, who wants to take that? It, does he yeah. want to take that chance? And well, it's answer, not worth it. It's not worth I it. I wouldn't trust this country it's, and the it justice Doesn't he have here. free health care where he lives? Right, yeah. right. Yes. He needs, hey, when he ran out on the deal, that was not the, at that point, it wasn't the woman dropping charges. It was the state going after him for uh, for, for being a fleeing felon or whatever, you know. Right. Uh, so he uh, he couldn't, uh, you know, it didn't matter if the, if the woman was not interested in prosecuting at this point. The, it, it's uh, No, she's, it was, she's come to his it. defense, in fact. That, that's the point, right. you know. Um, yeah. And, you know, he came from a culture where men having affairs with young women was not necessarily right. frowned upon. I mean, she was. How old was she? Was she at 13. 13? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't it was almost not so much pedophilia as it was European. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's strange to say that, but uh uh, there was a certain forgiveness in that area. She was 13, but she looked like she was 16. Yeah, she gave and me it permission. Doesn't matter, Phil. Stop it. Stop <laughs> talking about a 13 year old the way you want to fuck her. The, She's the, 13. Did you She's get the joke? <laughs> you, you don't get the joke. She was 13, it's but she looked 16. Phil, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I met up with a 14 year old once that looked like she was 22. Okay. And what so. did you do? Huh? And you turned around and went the other way, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. That's okay. what a man does. Once I found out. That's what a man does. <laughs> how, how many months did you date her before you found out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, it um, you know, I mean, I, I just, I, I look, I, you know, the idea of having sex with any woman under the age of consent to me is... Unless you're under the age of consent yourself. Although it's very strange in California. If you were like 15 and you had sex with a girl who was 16, you as a guy could be arrested for statutory rape. And really? that's true in yes. most states yeah. in the United States. Yeah. In other words, if you're underage, that doesn't make a difference. Nope. You know, so there are a lot of kids in California right now having illegal sex with each other because, you know, they're right. doing it younger and younger. But it doesn't Tell me about it. I have a 13-year-old that was telling me some kid at her school lost his virginity. I'm like, how the hell do you know this? Was it, Were you involved? Oh, no, but everybody was talking about it. And I'm going, oh, my God, I'm going to need more wine. It was on social media or something. Well, they're doing they're it. You know, they're doing it more and more at a younger age. And, and it is statutory rape, even if the guy is. And this is, this is what I consider a really sexist law was that if it was a guy, he was guilty of a felony of committing mm -hmm. statutory rape, but the girl who was 16, who was older than he was, wasn't guilty of anything. Exactly. And th there was some kind of sexual inequality going on there in the law. Why? Weren't exactly. they there saying is that they were having oral sex so that they could avoid... Uh, the, now, I would think it's just... Oh, I know where you're going, Phil. Yeah, that if well, you have the oral sex, they're still a virgin. No, that that was a, that was a Catholic thing. Oh no, but there was uh, something There's about the uh, <laughs> they, they weren't having a vaginal uh, penis sex uh, intercourse. They were having oral. There's a term sex. for that. I forget what and, the and uh, uh, and they thing is for that. yeah, it's it's what the kids felt was the way to go. Uh, All the kids are doing it now. It's yeah, called yeah. fellatio. They are, I can tell you. Yep. <laughs> 
uh, but, I but, had but, happen in my house. But when I I'm knowing I was growing up, you know, I mean, I always, I, I uh, thank God I didn't have sex until I had sex with a girlfriend who happened to be, oh, she was 17 at the time, and I was, I think I was 18. Yeah. Uh, well, the, that, that's within the area of tolerance. That was my son's story. Uh, exactly. Hey, Alex. Alex. But, uh, you know. Put your hands behind your back, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yes, position. yes, Jeff. Yeah, I remember I was 16, and I went out with some girl, and I met her, and I took her to the movies, and this and that, and I'm taking her home, and she was very attractive and stuff. And I asked, I said, how old are you? For some reason, you know. Maybe I asked her what school she's in, and yeah. everything didn't make sense. She was 13. Wow. 13 Jam to 16. <laughs> well, I, had one, I said, I, I never went out with her again. I won't say this I, one I, woman I was going out with was, so, was young, but when we'd watch a National Geographic special, she'd point at the screen and go, look, kitties. You know, so. <laughs> Okay, Jeff, that was as funny as they're going to get. That is about as funny no, as they're going to get. So, uh, Alex, you lost yours when you were 18 and the girl was 17. I think she was 17. I, I may have been 19. I don't know. But, uh, you know, yeah. it, it, you're within the, you know, you're within the age group that the person you're having sex is. With. But, but in your case, you're committing statutory rape because she's. Under Not at, the well, age at, the, of consent. at that day, at those remember days, it was eighteen. I think now it's it's seventeen. But uh, has, does anyone else remember it's, their it's first one? State. I know mine. In Jersey, it's sixteen. I found out my <laughs> son had a whole problem. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. yeah. So it depends on the state. Yeah. Because it's a state by state thing, just like abortion is a state by state thing. Yeah. Well, well I I was eighteen at uh, Boston University, uh, the um, uh, Tower A, tenth floor, and but I had quaaludes. <laughs> and she said to me, "Are you a virgin? Oh, are you a virgin?" And I said, "Oh no, <laughs> you believe me, I was a virgin." <laughs> Wait a minute, you had quaaludes and you weren't Bill Cosby? Yeah. 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 Or Roman Polanski. I even remember a name. Nice Mary job. Kay Adams, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Well, you never forget the first woman that you ever had uh, sex with. Yeah. Uh, I know. In my case, it was what's-her-name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget what's-her-name. Oh, her name was Sandy. And, yeah, she uh, was a bitch. Uh, huh? And, and no, she had a kid by me. Um, yeah. uh, that's another whole tragic story in my life, which I've told any number of times. Um, Have you ever met that child? No. No, I think he might be Howard Stern, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, uh, I, at one point I, at one point I was going to hire an attorney when I had a lot of, when I had a lot of money in San Francisco. I was going to hire an attorney to go look for him. And then I decided against it because my theory was uh, I didn't want to suddenly pop into some person's life and say, I'm your father. I would rather that if this person wanted to find out who his father is, I'm here. And it worked for Blue Skywalker. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't. I was almost going to say that. Yeah, Bill. I, I, I don't. But I didn't go there. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I wrestled with it. How would I feel if I were, say, adopted, and all of a sudden somebody comes into my life and says, "I'm your father." It's a big I, disruption. It, well, it would be more important if he were seeking me out and. Then Alex, he found what me. if he went on Ancestry or 23 and whatever that is? No, but that's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. No, in just, those days, yeah. they went into a blind, it was, it was into a oh, in those days, blind right, right. adoption I, I, where there was no way you were ever going to find out who adopted the child. Right. There was no record of it, nothing, you know. Because supposedly that happened to my son, and I always say, I make jokes now, maybe 10, 15, 20 years from now, somebody will contact me yeah. on Ancestry. You know, I just know it, I just I, I just know it was a boy because I was talking to her doctor because I wanted the kid uh, and uh, there was no way in those days that I was going to be able to get the kid and she was going to give it up for adoption and she had the, way, Alex, she, the boy really she had the right to give it up for adoption but I wanted the kid desperately and I went and saw her doctor and he talked with me and he said well you know you, you might not be the father I mean she was seeing other people and I went well you know I'm the one that's been told that this is my kid okay and he left the room for a couple of minutes and he had her thing out her uh, uh chart. medical chart 
and I, I'm very good at reading upside down. And I read that it was a boy. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I knew it was a boy. But that's the only way I ever knew what uh, what happened. So much hippa. Yeah, but oh, you know, today, that. today, yeah. today, if I suddenly said, "I want," if you don't want the kid and you're going to give it up for adoption, I want to adopt the kid. I want the kid. I would have a good fight in court. Okay, oh, yeah. but back yeah. in those hard, days, hard back that. in those days, impossible, just impossible. Yeah. It's Especially real hard today, today, too, though. At 18 yeah. years old, uh, it would have been very difficult. The uh, mother has all the rights. <clears throat> the, the female, the mother, or the yeah, baby. Absolutely. Well, you couldn't support. Now, if your parents would have come in and said, "We'll take the kid," that would have been a different story. No, but, I don't know that that wasn't the case. No, that wasn't no the case. There are no grandparent rights. There I, are. I raised my hand. I said, "I want to adopt the child." And they said, but, no, you can't adopt a child. But, We're going to give court, it up to a blind you know, adoption. Wow. The court might allow <laughs> guardianship by the grandparents before they do it for but you. But the mother, the mother would have to allow it. She yeah, would have yeah, to sign over everything. Allowed. Sure. Yeah. Has, has it gotten better for men in that? I mean, I used to be really so. horrific for men. That's they had my, no my chance in hell to get children. I heard it got a little better, but only because... A lot of these divorced dads or dads that didn't have uh, access to the kids have got together and and created a fund and a and a program. So when you if you were a dad that you were trying to get your rights back, you could go to these people and they would help you try to solidify your rights. Yeah. So I, I'm hoping it got better, but it was really, really, really bad for a while. They always defer to the mother. They yeah. defer to the mother. They defer to the mother? Yeah. Full house. I, I went yeah. through it, yeah. Hey, full house. Hello, John. Well, you said the magic word adoption. That's one of my big, uh, you know, topics when things come down to it since I was one. Oh, adopted. since you were yeah. one. Okay. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I the thing I hate to hear the most from people that when I say I'm adopted, well, don't you want to know who your real parents are? It's like, mm. no, yeah. I know who my real parents are. I, I went home with them when I was three months old. You know? that, well, no, they're my damn you, right? parents. They're, they're, they're your parents. So they're, but there's, yes. there is a biological parent. Uh, oh, yeah. Do people and, and, still and, use who your real parents are? Because I find that odd. I would never say that. John, less, were you on a milk carton? Less now. Less now. Were you on a age. milk carton at that age? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this kid? Pretty yeah. close. No, no. <laughs> but uh, my sister also, my big sister, uh, the only other kid in the family, uh, my mom was one of these very petite women. It was in, she was in her late 30s because it was after World War II, and she shouldn't have kids because it wouldn't be good, healthy for her. So they decided to adopt. And my grandfather on my dad's side actually was on the board of directors of the Chicago, the what do they call it at the time, the orphans' home or something like that. Yeah. So they know where to, they knew where to go and get it done. And my sister, though, um, being as contrary as she can be. Uh, anyway, knowing being a big sister, also, she actually was able to find out about her birth parents, which in Illinois was, as you yeah. said, like back then, especially, she was like 1947, so I don't know, we even yeah. had records, but somehow with all those detective, you know, adoption detective people or something, she wanted me to do it. It's like, yeah, I'm not interested. She wanted to know, and, and amazingly enough, she found out that her birth mother and birth father married two years later. Wow. But they couldn't have the kid because they weren't married in 1947. I'll tell you, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, and it, she's met, she's been out there. She went and, and visited them at one point a, few, a year or so after they, they got that connection. The, the birth parents actually was, were on a, you know, find my child sort of thing, too. Mm -hmm. Now, and there are, there are two... There are two birth sisters and a birth brother the brother didn't want to deal with this at all the two sisters though i have a picture somewhere she sent it to me because when they went out there of the three of them boy you know they you can see boy are they related <laughs> it's like my sister and i don't look like each other at all compared that was just unbelievable well you but know no, I, you know it was very i'd like to know the the the, the, the health end of it i'd like to have known you know i had problems with leg clots and stuff if i had known that if there was some sort of genetic predilection right, toward right, well, there are tests for that. You you could get all that work done. Yeah, no, but well, what he's saying the, is that I sometimes the, there are. I did the twenty three and E. Um, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, they, they have all kinds of tests. Yeah. 
will well, tell you what you're now. predisposed to. And yeah, yeah, but, but we didn't know that I needed to do that until. On the happened. other hand, Jeff, Jeff can probably uh, <laughs> Jeff can probably answer this. Uh, that no. that, okay. that if your parents if your parents had heart problems you have a predilection towards heart problems right Jeff? I would say so yes yeah so those are things you want to know and that I don't okay. think Alex, a test right. can tell you yes Alex, I could tell I you say good night I'm gonna go okay? well you, you only got five minutes good night Charlie I know I gotta, duty is right, calling me. duty is calling okay eggs. say goodbye to Charlene goodbye well, Charlene bye -bye. okay well, I had that I had that problem last night because I had to make a, a West Coast call and so I left about ten minutes yeah yeah I didn't want to. But I wasn't able to say goodbye because you guys were really, you know, really good, long, drawn out, you know, good, good chat there. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff, uh, Jeff has his hand up. Yeah. Okay. So I have a little uh, story about, uh, about deciding who is the father and who isn't and this kind of story. I knew uh, two uh, sisters and, and a younger brother and, uh, and, and the, the younger sister goes to school in like, uh, I don't know, she's like 12, 15 years old or something like that. Yeah. And the teacher says, well, if you and your sister both have blind, uh, uh, yellow, what I'm saying, the right color eyes, instead of being dark, mm -hmm. they, were, they were very light yeah. eyes. Uh, and they said, well... You understand that you can't have an equal brother with the same parents. Never heard of that. I oh, yeah. yeah. And so apparently, <clears throat> so they asked the mother about that. The mother got really angry about that whole discussion. Well, I'll tell you okay. where, where my Was it inaccurate? It, no, it was totally accurate. But here's the problem. It was, they had a different father. They didn't uh, know it. Oh, uh, uh, but the kid was born. Uh, but uh, the father was a guy down the street. Oh, and, so and, and nobody really knew if it was the guy and down surprise, the street. Surprise, 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 oh, surprise. He was the milkman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it was the equivalent of the book. You right? know something? I got to tell you. Here's I gotta the story. Tell you. Yeah. She, the mother dies. Yeah. Eventually. And there's the funeral. And the kid goes over to see who he thinks is his real father. Wow. And he walks in and he says to the guy, and the guy goes, yep, I'm your father. Oh my God! In a second. Wow! Wow! You have to test me. And they then became very good. That's cool. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, it's like, I'm sure that could work. At this point, whatever parents I have are probably, you know, ten years older than Alex, and I'm not sure I'd be able to find them. So By the way, like, you yeah. still there, Christine? Oh, I'm here. I just got a message from yet. you saying that. Okay, handsome, I'm hanging up on you. Uh, but you don't yeah, have to. We've only me. got about we've I'm only me. got about maybe thirty seconds left here before I go to the theme. So don't leave us. Let yet. me let me ask you, Alex. How old would your child be now? Oh God. Well, I was uh, I'm seventy seven now, and I was eighteen at the time. So yeah. go figure. What about is fifty nine? Fifty something. Fifty nine. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. How old is uh, Stern? Uh, St Stern's sixty four. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well. No, Stern's old. I thought he was close to 60. No, he's yeah, he's 64, I think. Yeah, he's, uh. yeah, he should get a haircut. Uh. Anyway, uh, you know. <laughs> this is, uh, Great show. Good night. Well, thank you very much. Uh, give us a call again soon, okay? I will. Thank you for the comedy talk. You're okay. wonderful, as always. Okay, bye-bye, sweetheart. And bye-bye uh, to the rest of you. I uh, want to thank uh, Mike for joining us tonight. And she, Renee, always great to have you here. Jeff, a pleasure. Brian, uh, Phil Meyer, Rob Alfano, Christine, of course, and John Rockwell. And there was somebody else, wasn't there? Briefly. Huh? Uh, I just said yeah. briefly. <laughs> briefly. Anyway. The other one? Anyway, uh, have a good night, everybody. And, you forgot uh, me. That's okay. And, uh, it was oh, the guy no, I said oh, Mike. No. I said Mike at the very beginning. Mm. And, 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 and I even I even let the audience see your name as well. So.
so was, and the guy with no the phone guy. number and the, right. uh, the guy with no phone number right anyway <laughs> thank you all would you wave a big goodbye okay all right and, and guess what the camera froze up again but it's a nice frozen picture i didn't realize that for the whole show i've had a frozen picture uh what is with this camera why does it do it i have no idea anyway i don't care i give up on this shit anyway uh i am uh, i'm out of here uh we're we're through with uh with this little show and with uh our uh whole thing look at that yeah, it's a nice picture i guess i i suppose anyway i'm alex bennett the intersection is next with uh, jack and amy i'll see you again on tuesday same time same station in life and by the way if you see her tell her i love her okay look at that picture